Please welcome Joe Horgan, Co-Chief Executive Officer and Founder, Mecca Brands. メッカブランツの共同最高経営責任者および創業者であるジョー・ホーガン氏をご歓迎ください。Good morning, and thank you, WWD, for having me here in one of my absolute favorite cities in the world, Tokyo. Any excuse to visit is a gift. So, as you've heard, my name is Joe Horgan, and I started Mecca Brands in 1997 with one small cosmetic store in Melbourne, Australia. Fast forward 20 years, and we now have 85 stores. A 23% share, share of the market, and we're on track to be Australia's biggest beauty retailer by the end of the year. Like many of you, I feel like I'm living through a retailing revolution. And whilst it's been a wild ride, this exploding market is giving Mecca the opportunity to thrive. Our business has quadrupled in the last five years. Which I thought was a lot until I, until I heard Matches Fashion <laughs> talking. <laughs> Today, I'm going to share with you how we've achieved that growth. But firstly, what is Mecca? Mecca has the exclusive retailing rights to over 100 of the best cosmetics brands from around the world. Think NARS, Urban Decay, Origins, Comme des Garcons, for example. And we house them in three different retailing concepts. We have Mecca Cosmetica, our luxury cosmetics boutiques, primarily on the high street with a high touch, high service, high design shopping experience, housed in about 150 square meters. Mecca Maxima, these are fun, high energy beauty playgrounds with self serve gondolas in shopping malls housed in about 300 square meters. Then Mecca Beauty, a one stop beauty shop that offers all of our brands in high traffic locations such as department stores and downtown CBD locations of about 400 meters plus. We also have Mecca.com.au, which is Australia's number one beauty website. Over the past decade, our growth has exploded and we've created some guiding principles. To help steer us through, I call them the, them the Mecca Maxims, and today I'm going to share with you the five key ones that drive our business. Number one, adapt or die. From day one, we've been clear about our brand DNA. It consists of an exclusive brand management model, a brand agnostic approach to service, a laser like focus on the customer, and an honest, Storytelling communication style. Those things haven't changed, but adapting everything else around our DNA has allowed us to soar in an incredibly volatile market. Back in 1997, when we started with Mecca Cosmetica, we targeted 25 year old plus women who wanted the very best of everything in life, and that included their cosmetics. Our early stores were small and luxurious, designed by top architects. With a high service approach. Fast forward to 2010, and the market changed. In fact, it exploded, and beauty, particularly, went ballistic, thanks to a new world order led by mobile, digital, and social media. Social channels such as Instagram and YouTube gave birth to new beauty brands, new products, new role models, the influencers. And new ways to learn how to apply makeup. Millennials embrace this beauty emancipation, where the customer is completely in control and a younger, much more informed, beauty obsessed customer was born. The only problem for us was that this new, younger customer, the beauty junkie as we call her, was never going to shop at Mecca Cosmetica. A beauty revolution was taking place in front of our eyes, and we needed to adapt fast. We responded with a totally new concept, Mecca Maxima, created to feed this younger beauty junkie's voracious appetite. So, Mecca Maxima stores are bigger, usually twice the size of Mecca Cosmetica, 
We upped the brand offer from 50 to over 100. We also introduced lower price pointed products, taking into consideration her need to purchase lots and lots and lots of products. At Mecca Maxima, we focus on superhero products. The harder to get and the more limited an item is, the better, as this creates hype and excitement, which in turn increases the social media coverage as people um, post their highly coveted swag. One example of this is when we were the first in the world to launch Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette in one store in one day. The result? Over 3,000 palettes sold in that one store on that one day, which equates to over $200,000 in sales. We also talk to this customer differently. We use a tabloid style of beauty headlines in our communications, often lifting the language from what's trending on social channels. So for example, in January, we used the top Googled skin concern questions of 2017, like crow's feet, to create a skincare promotion. We also feature um, influencer endorsed, endorsed performance reviews and peer-to-peer -peer recommendations. We transformed our, transformed our service model too, moving from the high service, high touch model in Mecca Cosmetica to an open cell gondola model in Maxima, where our customer is in complete control of how she shops. She can choose to have zero store team interaction. She can rely on digital content by referring to the iPads through the store. She can shop with her friends, or she can interact with the store hosts. It's her choice. Mecca Maxima now has 40 stores with another 15 slated for 2018. It recruited more than half a million new customers to Mecca just last year and it generates more than 50% of Mecca's total sales. And it's also underpinned a lot of the thinking of our newest concept, Mecca Beauty, our next adapt or die project. But now moving right along to Mecca Maxim number two, it's all about the customer. Having the customer at the center of everything we do has been part of our DNA from day one so we haven't had to radically shift our thinking as the market changes from retailer controlled to customer controlled. It informs everything we do and it means putting the customer before commercial considerations. A couple of examples of this. First, the Mecca price promise. Australia's retail prices have been high historically, thanks to some of the highest leasing and salary costs in the world and a wildly fluctuating currency, all of which made it extremely hard to achieve globally competitive prices. And yet we knew that this was our customer's number one gripe with buying cosmetics in Australia. So we staggered a series of price reductions over an 18 month period and funded this by reducing costs in other areas of the business over time. We'd already calculated that we would go out of business in under six months if we did it all in one go. So clearly, that was a definite no-go. But with the staggered approach, we were able to achieve a promise that customers would pay less than 15% more than if she bought the product in the brand's home market. And in reality, we deliver 10%, which actually just consists of the 10% local sales tax. Implementing the Mecca Price Promise was terrifying at the time because nobody wants to implement a bet the business initiative, but it was an absolute game changer. And we believe that this initiative alone added 10% same store sales growth to our business the following year. Right, at this minute, we're rolling out another counterintuitive example of putting the customer at the center of everything we do in what we call our Mecca Edutainment Initiative, which combines beauty entertainment and education in store. We recognize that as the market shifts increasingly to online purchases, we have to do more than ever to entice our customers into an actual physical store. 
We've always provided services like makeovers and facial, facials and international artist workshops. But now we're pushing our experiential approach further and dedicating up to 30% of floor space to initiatives like the Mecca Beauty Lab, which is our version, smaller, of the Apple Genius Bar, where you can book in for free how-to services in small classes of six on the hour. The Mecca Skin Studio, where you can book in for complimentary skin diagnoses and how-to services. The digital Get the Look stations, where you choose your look from lookbooks and then have it applied by an artist in store. And Mecca Pops, a rotating space that brands can take over monthly and offer different activities, limited edition products, unique services, and more. We dreamed up these experiences to deliver the holy grail in physical retail, instant gratification for the customer. So why is this a scary move? Well, because we're basically upending the principles of retail space management. We're taking 30% of our productive selling space, which we pay massive rent on, and we're turning it over to a higher cost of service, lower return activity that we hope will increase customer engagement and in turn customer loyalty. The good news is, so far, it's working with increased footflow and sales and glowing customer feedback. This tells us that passionate customers still want to visit stores. We just have to work out new ways to engage them once they step through our door. So, on to Mecca Maxim number three. Think like a brand, not like a retailer. So when I started Mecca 20 years ago, I had no clue about retail. I had the sum total of four years' experience at L'Oreal as a brand manager, first in London and then in Australia. Now, ironically, this has actually held me in good stead as I've lived by the belief that if you build a brand, think like a brand, and look after the brands within your offer, the sales will naturally come. This has allowed us to do things that a typical retailer would never consider doing. Firstly, we don't see ourselves as just a retailer selling the merchandise. We think of ourselves as the brand manager for every brand we carry. We hold ourselves completely responsible for each brand's performance, including sales and awareness in our market. We look after every aspect of the brand. We ship X works, we devise and execute the launch and the marketing plans, we handle all the education, we manage all the in-store touch points and events, and so the list goes on. And as a result, our brands usually outperform in Australia versus other markets. Just one example of this is Nars Cosmetics, which is owned by Shiseido, which is the third largest color brand in the Australian market versus a number nine spot in its home market, the US. Thinking like a brand also came into play last year when we launched our private label makeup line called Mecha Max. We decided not to take the well-trodden path of standard packaging, minimal d- detail, and safe messaging. Instead, we decided to launch a fully-fledged brand and to do so with a real boom. We saw the launch as a strong value proposition for our customers, yes, but also as a way to further engage them in our overall Mecca Maxima brand. We wanted Mecca Max to be about more than just price. We wanted it to be lustworthy with its sparkling packaging and bold graphics. We wanted to pad out beauty junkies' toolkits with things like life-proof concealers, and we wanted a visual campaign that reflected today's beauty junkie. For launch, we hit the digital airwaves, reaching 23% engagement levels, the highest seen in beauty in Australia ever, resulting in YouTube doing a case study on the initiative. And so far, it's worked. Mecca Max will achieve sales of over $20 million out of Mecca Maxima's 40 doors within the first 12 months of launching. 
Now, Mecca Maxim number four, create a community of fanatics. When it comes to our shoppers, our goal went from originally building a loyal customer base to then reinforcing our community to finally amass amassing a nation of Mecca beauty fanatics. Today, we have an active customer database of over 2 million people out of a population of just over 20 million in Australia. So just for context, this equates to 12 million customers in Japan as a proportion of the Japanese population. So we built our nation of Mecca beauty junkies using the power of social media. In 2015, we launched the hashtag Mecca beauty junkie on Instagram. And today it has over 10,000, no, 110, thousand posts on Instagram, its own YouTube channel with over six million views, and it's used by brands both inside and outside our industry to reach our very engaged community. This community generates an enormous amount of user-generated content. They share, they share how they're wearing a product, what brands they're talking about, what store events are truly appealing to them. They love to be part of our beauty conversation be it about mermaid eyes or ombre lips. And yes, for all of you non-beauty people in the audience, these are both things, and we pay close attention. We take that information and we strategize around it, whether it's creating Halloween-themed makeup applications or giving them more transparent ingredient information in store and online. This laser-like focus on the online community is why Mecca has become the number one beauty retailer on social in Australia, with one in five Australian women following us, and with engagement levels over 70% above industry average. We also whip this community of enthusiasts into a celebratory frenzy when we open new stores. For example, last September, we had over 2,000 people waiting for our new winter garden store to open. But we didn't just want them to wait in line before the doors opened at 9 a.m., since some of them had slept overnight to be at the front of the queue. We wanted them to have fun. So we had a DJ, coffee and muffins served up by rather fabulous waiters, celebratory makeup stations, a countdown, and of course, a glitter gun. We even passed out Mecca Uno card games so they would have something to do whilst they waited. And that day, on our first day of trade, over 8,000 people passed through the doors and sales hit over $300,000. We're equally focused on our 1.4 million loyalty members who account for 88% of our spend. We call them the Mecca Beauty Loopers and we give them full-size product on their birthday, and quarterly boxes filled with deluxe samples. Now, they have to pick these up in store, which, as an aside, has increased store tra traffic by 20%. Another perk we're giving them is the chance to buy tickets to Mechaland before anyone else. And what is Mechaland? Well, we all know millennials love a music festival, so we're doing a beauty festival, a three-day extravaganza in April. In a super cool warehouse with 50 brand installations, global pre-release products, Instagram-worthy backdrops everywhere, meet and greets with Australia and New Zealand's biggest influencers, video workshops, a face-off where we search for the next big makeup artist in Australia, and oodles of Mecca land merchandise. It's our first one ever, the first of many to come, we hope, based on the reaction when we announced it, as we had our highest ever engagement levels on both Instagram and Facebook. And when tickets went on sale just this past Monday, all 10,000 sold out in less than 30 minutes. But if any of you are in Australia, I'm sure we can find you some tickets. Please do come and join us. And finally, Mecca Maxim number five. Our people are our power. They are our lever. They are the beating heart of Mecca. Mecca's culture is my personal passion project. 
because I believe a highly engaged team is the secret to retailing success. And I have the air miles to prove this. Last year, when Mecca turned 20, we celebrated with every team member in every state. I have to say, I was rather partied out by the end of it all. We prioritize team engagement above all else, and we allocate nearly 3% of turnover to team education. Our teams receive over 200 hours of training in their first year alone. We send them to New York and London for fashion weeks, and they come back and educate teams nationally. We create careers, not just jobs, with pathways into makeup artistry, skin, fragrance, education, and management. 90% of our promotions are filled by internal candidates, and that's a company-wide KPI. We love our team, and in turn, our team loves our customers. And yes, there are obvious measures for this, such as customer satisfaction. And we receive over 10 customer compliments for each complaint. We also consider them the ultimate influencer. They are literally like in-store celebrities to our customers. So we built a program called Mecca Beauty Scouts, where the in-store team meets with our merchandisers to help inform what brands to go after and what trends we should be getting ahead of. And they're also the face of our Mecca Beauty Junkie YouTube channel. Our teams really are the beating heart of Mecca, and we treat them as the precious resource that they truly are. So, I've shared Mecca's five key maxims. Adapt or die, it's all about the customer. Think like a brand, not like a retailer. Create a community of fanatics, our people are our power. And I've given some examples of how these have shaped our approach to cosmetics retailing in Australia. And it all sounds pretty rosy, right? That's because I haven't included another of my favorite Mecca maxims, fail fast, fail forward. And let me tell you, there have been many, plenty, plenty of false starts and failures over the last 20 years. But I must say, it's much more enjoyable talking about the wins and successes. So many thanks to WWD for giving me the opportunity to reflect on some of Mecca's retailing highlights today. And thank you all very much for your time and attention. And now I'd be happy to take any questions if there are any. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Testing, testing. Can you hear me now? Thank you. Joe, that was an excellent presentation. Thank you. I know that you have stores in New Zealand, but do you have any plans for global expansion? <laughs> well, I was very inspired by the Matches Fashion.com <laughs> presentation. And I'm looking at it going, I think there are so many ways to go internationally now. We have focused very clearly on Australia and then New Zealand because they were very um, easy and logical markets for us to enter into. As we look further afield, you know, we don't know the local real estate market, we don't know the local labor market, and it does become more complex. So for us, we have to weigh up you know, is that realistic? How would we go about it? Or as we develop our own brands, is that something that we should take internationally? Or should we build our profile online first and then look to drive um, retail from there? And to be honest with you, for the first 20 years, the total goal, our BHAG was always be you know, Australia and New Zealand's number one beauty destination. Whatever it takes, that's our slogan. And, you know, we'll get there at the end of this year. So I did sort of wake up at the beginning of this year and go, best be thinking of next steps now. Uh, that was great. Very inspiring to hear. 
Um, I was curious how important the men's grooming business is for you. Well, you've hit upon an area of opportunity for us. There's no question about that. And interestingly, we have focused absolutely on women. We were quite clear what our target market was, and it was women. And we pushed and pushed and pushed that for the first 20 years. And you know, we have a couple of unisex lines, but we have not um, forayed or made a foray into the men's market yet. Interestingly, it looks like the first way we really will connect with the male market is through this you know, male makeup artist movement um, that is happening, and that's something that we're really participating in. In terms of the more traditional male grooming market, it is on our radar screen um, because as we do sort of head towards 30% share in Australia, it's like, okay, how do we now extend? So there's no question it's a huge opportunity and again, another one that we need to get cracking on. That was so great. You and I need to be friends, I have to say. <laughs> we'll become friends soon. Um, you talked about your successes. You, you mentioned some failures. Is there anything that you have learned during this process? Is there anything you can tell us that is your main lesson you've learned? I've, look, I've tried to talk about the, the key lessons that I've learned, which are around just keep staff on board, you know, mine them for every, every piece of information they have and understand that they are the lightning rod to your business. If I had to choose absolutely one thing, that would be it. But other... Um, things I would say, other things I've learned is with a lot of our missteps and as I said there have been many, for example a whole concept, kit cosmetics where, you know, and I loved that concept and you know, we opened seven stores and I thought it was amazing but I was about the only one. So, you know, we then flipped it into, me you know, into Mecca's and they were immediately much more successful. Um, but if you build a community of fanatics, they will forgive you every mistake you make along the way. That's been another fantastic learning I've had. And if we're very transparent about it and go, oops, well, we tried that, now on to the next one. And they sort of become part of that conversation with you. So I think that's been another um, thing that we focus on, and that is let's just be completely transparent with our customers. Let's really build that relationship. Let's have them on the journey with us and... Uh, it gives us a lot more freedom to get things wrong. Well, as you tried. Yeah, do you know what? Back to fail fast, fail forward. Try lots and lots of things, see what sticks, and then really get behind those things. That's what we've tried to do. It doesn't always work. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>